Razabani for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. After searching him down, I finally got him today. The knowledge himself, Mr. Spencer Ferron. Spence, where have you been hiding today? I've been everywhere, man. Done a lot on uh, for Sky News, BBC News, um, Channel 5, Channel 4. So, yeah, I've been kind of booked out. At, at least you squeezed me in tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just grateful that people uh, want to hear my opinion. And they have to pay to hear it. You're getting it for free. <laughs> um, Spence, uh, a great night last night of boxing in the heavyweight division. Deontay Wilder and, and Tyson Fury. Just want to go back 48 hours when they weighed in. Everyone thought, oh, Tyson Fury's coming in quite heavy. Deontay Wilder's coming in quite heavy. Round one starts. And it seemed like Deontay Wilder was targeting that body and keeping that distance. What did you make of that kind of first round? Um, I, I really do wish that he did administer the overhand right and I think like um, as Deontay Wilder was jabbing the body and look, also massive props to Malik Scott you know massive massive props to Malik Scott they did try to implement a game plan and I like um, you know the conveyancy skills that Deontay Wilder sorry that Malik Scott has to Deontay Wilder and he was he relayed it in a way that Deontay Wilder in camp you can see they worked on things and they and they tried to do it but you're you're in with a a genius IQ'd fighting man in Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury was most probably born with boxing gloves on you know that <laughs> I'm just gonna be real with you he most probably was born when he's like oh it's a boy and he had gloves on he, He's been he's born in the game, and you can see with little things and little subtleties that he does in the ring, even when it looks scruffy, he knows what he's doing. Even when he goes down, he knows what he's doing, and he has a containment to it. And it's also when you're when you're when you're comfortable with being in the fire. And that's what he was. But what Deontay Wilder was doing was very, very clever. The stab into the body, should have tried to come over the overhand right because you see that's what he's working on anyway. He should have just thrown it anyway because he has an almighty right hand. Um, but yeah, it, what can we say? So, you know, my heart, my heart kind of goes out for Deontay Wilder because I know how much it meant to him. But I also, my I also know, like, when you're in a great fight like that, you're going to say, like, yeah, do you remember Fury Wilder? We're not going to think about who won or who lost. We're just going to say, oh, yeah, like, Fury Wilder. Because just like when we say, like, Hagler Hearns, we know the outcome, but it's Hagler Hearns, though. You know what I mean? Similarly to, like, November of 1990, when we say Eubank Ben. Do you get what I'm trying to say to you? When we say Hagler Hearns, you know, like, what was that, April... April 15th, um, 90, what was it? Yeah, 1985. We don't look and say to ourselves who won, who lost. We just remember that it was it was a classic, you know? And when, when, you're, when you're being around guys who have been in classics, that's up there. That is one of the best heavyweight fights, right? It's up there. It's up there with the first fight with Bo Holyfield you know, it's, it's up there. Holyfield Dogs is a fight that goes underneath the radar, which is an incredible fight. Anybody, you want to just go watch Holyfield Dogs and you think, my goodness gracious, and that wasn't even for a world title. But when you're talking about trilogies, when we're talking about trilogies in the game, yeah, that's up there. That's up there. You know what I mean? Because we haven't really had trilogies. I think we've had two prior on trilogies and not even trilogies like um Ezra Charles and Ezra Charles and Judge Joe Walcott fought four times for the world title. You know what I mean? It was two apiece, but they fought four times for the world title. So and that was they went from late 40s to early 50s, where those two went back and forth after Joe Lewis vacated the world title after retiring and having come back out of retirement. 
that we move on from there. You know what I mean? The last undisputed European champion that we had was Ingebar Johansson. And Ingebar Johansson uh, knocks, knocks out um, Floyd Patterson. And they fight three times. So that was a trilogy for the world title. Then we like to talk about trilogies and we say like, oh yeah, well, Ali, Ali versus Frazier, but not realizing that the second fight that Ali had with Frazier was a non-title fight. Non the world win for world title was for the um, North American Boxing Federation title, right? But a trilogy, remember these guys fought three times for a world title and one was a draw, which we believe that Tyson Fury won. The second fight was Tyson Fury winning massively. And the third fight, you know, they really did leave the, 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 the best to last because that was an incredible fight. Five knockdowns. Come on, man. What a fight. What a fight. Spence, when obviously a Fury uh, knocked down Deontay in, in round three, it seemed like Deontay would be lucky to get out of the fight, to, to survive into round four. He didn't just survive, but he managed to knock Fury down twice in round four. What was your instant reaction when you saw Wilder coming back like that? What do, what do we know? What, what does that say about Deontay Wilder? No, you know what? It is like, forget about all the allegations that were made in the past and everything else, which Deontay Wilder really does believe, yeah? It was more to do with the fact that Deontay Wilder was just like, I ain't gonna like a punk, you know? And his mindset was, I would rather die than go out like a punk. And you know, Malik Scott was under strict orders, no matter what, you ain't flying no time. No matter what. You know what I mean? And Malik had to be on that mindset, yeah, because I know what we're going to bring to the table to, to try and master this win. But you're dealing with a different kind of guy in Tyson Fury. When I'm mean, like a guy knows boxing, he really does know boxing. He really, really does know boxing. And I, um, when, when, when Fury went over, I was doing a fight along when the fight is right, me and Tundi, I knew that Fury was going to get up. I mean, because there were bad knockdowns, but I knew that his head was clear. And Woody Fury, he got up and he grits his teeth and starts frying back again. This is what makes the fights so great. So, so great. Getting to round six, seven, eight, it looked like Fury started to start, started to win the rounds. Um, and it looked like it was going to go 12 rounds, even though Deontay's legs didn't look great. It looked like he didn't have much power left uh, in, his, in, his, in his punches. Round 11 now, Fury knocks him once. And then just talk me th through the, the knockout and how you saw it coming. You know what? I, di I didn't see it coming because I, I really wanted to go points. I, I wanted to go points. So that way, like, you know, um, Wilder could have, like, Wilder, Wilder probably wanted to go out on his shield. He did go out on his shield. He went, on, he went out on his shield that was made out of vibranium that was better than the, the, the shield that that um, Captain America has. It was an incredible, when I, he went out on his shield, he gave it everything. They both gave it what they had. But the telling point was the fact that one man, one man has been born into boxing and the next man went into the gym and wanted to do it because it was something to do. And then, then they found that like, well, I could help because his, his daughter was ill. And it's, it's, a, different, it's a different form of motivation. Right, Tyson Fury actually wants to be in that ring. He loves it because of his boast, like I'm a fighting man. Tyson Fury, you know, like I'm saying, it was to me, it was kind of sad that um, they didn't embrace Tyson Fury. Went to go and embrace him at the end, and, and Wilder, Wilder said, like, you know, I don't respect you, move, which was sad because he should have taken that piece there as a man. But I also understand, like, Deontay Wilder had to believe all these allegations and everything else about Tyson Fury or the skullduggeries 
just to be able to say to, to, to G himself back to go back in the ring. But now he knows there are no excuses. So in a way, I kind of feel sorry for Deontay Wilder um, because of the fight and the fight was that good. If he went out there and he bottle dropped it and all the rest of it, I'm saying, mm, nah, that like, he gave it his best. And he was that close to winning as well. He was close. You know what I mean, when he had Tyson Fury over in round four, he was that close to winning, but he wasn't because this is boxing. And then when you're seeing there's little things that we're seeing in there, which Tyson Fury knows. He knows how to administer his body weight on someone. He knows how to weaken your legs. He knows the heat behind your head, like in a combination, there'll be cuff you with a shot that will arc in like left up that will hit you on the back of the head will scramble the brain. These are all these little sneaky things that you don't just pick up overnight. It takes years and years and years of learning and being comfortable with it. And then once you're comfortable with it, you become it. And that's what Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury has become it. And I've said this before years ago, that you go throughout history, Tyson Fury would have given anybody, anybody trouble. And I mean like anybody, anybody in history, Tyson Fury would have given, I'm not saying he would have beaten them, but he would have given anybody trouble. And, and right now, of his era right now, even though it's not over yet, but he's the best of his generation. Spence, moving forward, we know Dylan White, Otto Wannan, is now officially the mandatory slot to fight Tyson Fury for that WBC belt. We don't know what Tyson Fury is going to do. We just don't know if he's going to be elevated to franchise. We don't know what's going to happen. Where does Deontay Wilder go from here? It all depends because there are big fights here for him. You know what I mean? There's the Joshua fight, who, and, I, and the next thing, I really do believe that anti Joshua can come back from what, you know what I mean? I know that he's going to implement certain changes. I believe so. And I really, hand on heart, believe that anti Joshua, and right now I'm seeing a lot of people shot on anti Joshua, right? And I want to know where it's coming from. Does it come from a position of love or does it come from a position of they just don't like the system? They don't like the success that he is creating with Eddie Hearn. They don't like the smugness of Eddie Hearn. You know, you get what I'm trying to say? And it's like, British boxing is indebted to Anthony Joshua. And just leave it at that. I'm not going to get no further than that. I'm just saying British boxing is indebted to him, what that kid has done. And he's done it on supposed limited ability. But, you know what I mean? The, the kid's completely blessed. He's a blessed human being. Um... But there are fights for Deontay Wilder. There's the Dylan White fight will still be big. You know what I mean? There'll, there'll be a big fight with him and uh, and Joe Joyce because Joe Joyce does need a dance partner. So there are still really, really big fights out there for him. Um, don't get twisted, especially after the fight that we had, that we witnessed last night. And so you can't witness a fight like that, not think like they're in. Like, Deontay Wilder's not done. You know what I mean? All he's got to do is now, now he's, this is the challenging part, is the acceptance, because you can't make no excuses now. Accept it, but then also accept that I lost to the better man. Why was he the better man? And you can make some improvements, because I believe that him and Malik Scott is a very, very good combination. And I think he could come back and, and do stuff and still be right up there. Headweight box, if it can happen. Spencer, just finally on this, stylistically and hypothetically, what would be a bigger challenge for Fury, Usyk or Joshua? Um, stylistically, I think Usyk because he's a southpaw, even though he's not that big, but he throws punches at angles and he's got the greater IQ. But and we've seen now the thing that was missing from Tyson Fury's repertoire was the fact that he will he'll rock with you now. Like, what well, I love it that kind of thing. That kind of thing makes him a very, very difficult man to fight and it makes him a very, very difficult man to beat, right? But what I am saying is, and people say, what are you talking about? anti Joshua is still a work in progress. And I believe that this loss to Usyk could be the best thing that could have ever happened to him, right? Meaning that now he's going to have to reevaluate things. He's going to have to look back into himself and all right. Because Anthony Joshua, outside of Canelo, yeah, is the cash cow of boxing. Right? And you know, you go to an Anthony Joshua fight, 
and it's like you're going to a rock concert. That within itself shows you that the, that the young man is incredibly blessed. So if he can implement change, then he can he could get the the change in certain results when he goes on fights. But he's gonna to have to implement that change because I think a lot of people have been very, very hard on him, saying like, oh well, he's just manufactured, he's just this, the all right, then right, manufactured or not, what it's not no easy man can go and beat Klitschko. It's not no everyday man get to beat Josie Parker. Go through the list. You know what I mean? He's got win over Dylan White. You know what I mean? A knockout win over Povetkin. And that Povetkin was, was a terror because he stuck it on Anthony in the first couple of rounds. You go right throughout. Like, you look at his resume, he's got a really, really good resume. I think people should take time with Anthony Joshua. And even when I'm saying people should take time, myself included. Myself included. Right? Take time. Work in progress. And I believe if he wants, he can come back. But right now, the Gypsy King is reigning supreme. I've still got Usyk ranked higher than... than than um, Fury on the power for power list, but not as a heavyweight. Spencer Ferron, IFL TV, thank you very much.